Hello and welcome to another edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Coming up on the show, the Development Bank of Jamaica is providing financing opportunities for tradesmen and women to grow their businesses. Plus, a few recipients of national honors and awards share their thoughts with us. And we turn the spotlight on Dr. Horace Chang, who received the Order of Jamaica for sterling contribution to public service. Those and so much more on the other side of this break. Good day, I'm Lisa Rowe and this is your JIS News for Thursday, October 24, 2024. Prime Minister Dr. Andrew Holness is asserting that the move to create a new category of national honors, the Order of National Icon, is aimed at modernizing Jamaica's system of recognition. This initiative aligns with ongoing efforts to better acknowledge the contributions individuals make to the nation. His comment comes on the heels of an announcement that the new honor will first be awarded to Louise Bennett Coverley and Robert Nesta Marley. Speaking at the luncheon in commemoration of the conferment of national civil honors on Monday, Prime Minister Holness sought to assure the public that political considerations did not influence this decision. The formation of a new category of award is part of a general thrust to modernize our system of national honors and to bring greater recognition to all the categories of persons who would have contributed to Jamaica. What we started with 60 years ago would not necessarily fully capture all the persons who are making significant contributions today to the development of the country. In other news, the Prime Minister is encouraging persons to educate themselves about climate change related issues and the negative impact these have on their lives. These include severe drought, rising temperatures and sea levels and flooding. Dr. Holness is also urging universities to play a greater role in informing the public about these issues in order to combat the high level of prevailing misinformation. It's the universities that need to get these complex issues to the common man. The role of the university is not to keep knowledge circulating in its halls. It's to circulate the knowledge outside the society to combat the high level of misinformation and ignorance that exists. Dr. Holness maintains that climate is changing more rapidly than projected or anticipated by virtue of human activities. He insists that it is therefore important that even as government implements measures to combat impending threats, citizens seek to be informed and do their part. Climate change is not a distant threat. It is here now. Climate change is not something that is happening to us. Climate change is what we are doing. The public can now access the financial sector adjustment company FinSAC Commission documents after an archive system was launched last Thursday. FinSAC was set up in 2009 to look into circumstances that led to the near collapse of the country's financial sector in the 1990s. A final report on the Commission's findings was never submitted to the government, but now information gathered during the hearings is available to the public. Minister of Finance and the Public Service, Dr. Nigel Clark, says the archives will provide an opportunity for stakeholders, researchers and members of the public to access valuable insights from various perspectives. This, he says, will add to public understanding of that period. The perspectives of debtors, those who came forward to report of their experiences, of borrowing from financial institutions and getting caught in the vortex that was the 1990s interest rate environment. You have the perspective of the major shareholders of financial institutions who came forward and provided their accounts of their stewardship and the problems and challenges that they faced. And you have the perspective of 
the policy makers, of the administrators of FinSAC, and I believe of some regulators as to how events unfolded from their point of view. The archives can be found on the Ministry of Finance website. Residents of Adelphi in St. James are now enjoying improved health care services with the opening of the new $50 million Adelphi Health Center. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton officially opened the 4,262-square-foot building recently. It was funded by the European Union under the Poverty Reduction Program and implemented by the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSIF. The new health center is capable of serving approximately 2,000 persons monthly. It offers enhanced health service features, including two dental offices, a pharmacy, a nebulization room, and treatment room. It's not a small amount of money that has been spent here to create an attractive environment. Attractive environment, but also an environment with utility that's going to provide for the people of this community and its environs. And, uh, we want to thank the EU and the Poverty Alleviation Program that was devised in conjunction with uh, JSIF for pulling this together. Head of the EU delegation to Jamaica, Dr. Erja Askola, says the organization is open to supporting Jamaica's inclusive health development efforts. Our common goal with the government with the government of Jamaica and with, the, uh, with our partners is to strengthen health systems in Jamaica and to improve the quality of life of Jamaicans. In other health news, the minister is assuring that the maternal high dependency unit at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital will be back in operation this month. Dr. Christopher Tufton gave the update to Parliament this week. The Victoria Jubilee Hospital will start using the Proma Maternal HDU this month. Split units have been put in place to allow the space to be used and a contract has been signed with CAC to fix the central air system. The high dependency unit at Victoria Jubilee is one of seven provided under the program for maternal and child health PROMAC. Dr. Tufton says the other six, located at Spanish Town Hospital, St. Anne's Bay Hospital and the Bustamante Hospital for Children are operational. In addition to PROMAC HDU, Madam Speaker, colleagues, there are ICUs and HDUs throughout the system that can provide care for the general population, including maternal HDU care for those hospitals that do not have a specified maternal HDU. These hospitals include the UHWI, that's the University Hospital of the West Indies, Cornwall Regional, Falmouth, and Mandeville Regional. And finally, the Mandeville Regional Hospital is benefiting from the donation of an eye laser machine and 23 stretchers valued at $23 million. The items are gifts from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and the Rotary Club of Mandeville. At a recent handing over ceremony, CEO for the hospital, Alwyn Miller, expresses gratitude for the donation, which he says comes at an opportune time. Mr. Miller explains that the existing eye machine recently went down and now the ophthalmology unit at the hospital is able to utilize a new machine to complete some 200 or more surgeries annually. Senior Registrar and Acting Head of the Accident and Emergency Department, Dr. Alvin Henry, adds that the A&E department will benefit significantly from the patient stretchers. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Lisa Rowe. Thanks for watching. On Finance Matters this week, we tell you how you can access up to $500,000 to improve and expand your business. The details from the Development Bank of Jamaica, DBJ. Do you want to improve your productivity and expand your business? You can access loans of up to $500,000 through the DBJ's tool program. 
but how can you apply and what are the eligibility requirements? Hi, I'm Shaquille Rochester Shorter and welcome to Finance Matters. Joining us to discuss the DBJ's tool program is Mr. Edison Galbraith, General Manager for Channels, Relationship and Marketing at the DBJ. Remember to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow the Ministry of Finance on Facebook, Instagram, X, LinkedIn, TikTok and now Threads to see all the episodes and highlights. Mr. Galbraith, thank you for coming on our program today. Thanks for having us. Firstly, what is the TOOLS program and what are its primary objectives? Okay, so the TOOL program, Tradesperson Ownership Opportunity Loan, is a new product that the Development Bank of Jamaica has put out to support our tradespersons, our tradesmen, tradeswomen, and working in various sectors across Jamaica, whether they be plumbers, tilers, hairdressers, dressmakers, in all of the sectors, in agriculture as well, okay. to acquire tools to help them to be more productive and to grow their businesses. When we're talking tools, we're talking literal equipment and machinery? Yes, we are. And it's a wide range of equipment and machinery, whether it's weed whackers, whether it's blowers, whether it's rammers for construction sites, um, surges for stitching. It covers a wide range of industries, including media as well. So Mr. Galbraith, to touch on my next question, who is eligible to participate in this program? Any tradesperson in Jamaica, male, female, whether they are plumbers, tilers, anybody using any specialized equipment in the agricultural sector, in the media sector, medical sector, whatever it is, they're eligible to apply for this facility. All right, so sometimes we hear people complaining about loan application process. Mm -hmm. Tell us what DBJ tool program, the loan application process looks like for a regular person on the street. Okay, so we've simplified the application process for tradespersons in that we've gone out and we've created partnerships with tool suppliers all across the country. We've also brought on board five microfinance institutions. So any tradesperson who goes to a supplier, all they need to do is to get an invoice for the cost of the goods that they want to purchase, then they'll take that to one of our five microfinance institutions who are in this program. Okay. And they will take them through the application process. So Mr. Galbraith, we know that we can get up to 500,000. Is there a minimum amount? There's actually no minimum amount. So if you want to buy a hammer and a screwdriver, you can go in and purchase it. If you want to buy much larger and more complicated equipment that costs over 500,000, we can allow it from other sources. Okay. But this facility goes from literally from zero to 500,000. Okay, awesome. So what are some of the ways that contractors can benefit from this program? I know they're getting the money, but what are other ways? Okay, so the first way in which they benefit is they can get up to $500,000 to purchase tools for up to two years repayment okay. at a 9% interest rate. And just to work that out simply, it's probably $5,000 for every 100,000 that they borrow. Okay. So it's very, very affordable. Other benefits include, they're able to get discounts from participating suppliers. So we have seven suppliers who have signed on to the program that they will provide discounts to our, our tradespersons purchasing tools. In addition to that, if they don't have enough collateral, we have our credit enhancement facility that will provide support for up to 90% of these loans. In addition to that, we're also working along with the Heart Trust NTA to provide certification for some of our tradespersons who need that support, as well as registration in their skills bank. And in addition to that, <laughs> we also are working with the JBDC to provide training financial literacy training for tradespersons who may want to improve how they're operating their businesses. Well, it seems as if DBJ is thinking about everything here, Mr. Galbraith. But before we go quickly, tell me three things we need to remember about the tool program. Okay, so the tool program first is available to tradespersons in all sectors across the industry, whether it's agriculture, construction, dressmaking, hairdressing, even media. Okay. Um, second thing is that they can get up to $500,000 with 24 months to repay at 9%. 
thirdly, there are other services available in terms of discounts from retailers, training through JBDC, and registration in the Hartrust NTA Skill Bank. So where can we apply? So tradespersons can apply through the five microfinance institutions who are offering the product. They can go to our website at dbankjm.com, visit us on our social media handles, and we're also advertising in the press. So there's a lot of information out there that will allow you to know where to apply to get this loan. Well, on that note, Mr. Galbraith, thank you for coming on our program today. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us on this episode of Finance Matters. Remember to follow us on social media at MOF Jamaica and tune in next week as we continue to demystify the economic and fiscal policies and initiatives implemented by the government to empower Jamaicans as we chart a path to Jamaica's economic prosperity. Apply to the Heart NSTA Trust. Learn a new skill and expand your horizons. Your government has made it completely free to you. He's calm in nature, a forward thinker, and has a passion for public service and people. As we continue our series on National Awards honorees, today we turn the spotlight on the Honorable Dr. Harris Chang for his contribution to public service. University, as well as Cornwall, I've been a student activist for pretty much all my life. For different reasons from different times, but I was always in some student activity. And uh, out of university, I kind of walked straight into the Young Jamaican Jamaica Labour Party politics in the 76 campaign, which was an interesting time. That's the genesis of a lifelong career in public service, spanning over 31 years in representational politics, 22 of which as a government minister. What prompted this interest was the inequality of educational opportunities for children in deep rural communities. At that time, not many primary students were able to go to high school or university. In fact, it was Edwin Allen who offered the 70 to 30 program where primary school kids were given a chance to go to college. 70% of the space was reserved. And the near was being up in the hills of Westport and just one student get every year. So two out of the 10 got into high school. And I thought that was, there was a systemic error in the system that could only be corrected by political activity. And so, shortly after entering politics in 1976 as an active member of the Jamaica Labour Party JLP, Dr. Chang was elected Member of Parliament for Hanover Western in 1980. And that's where I learned the process of governance. It was also no looking back, as the appointments kept coming, from Member of Parliament to Government Minister and Deputy Prime Minister, among others. The areas of service were in health, housing, environment, local government, works, inner city development, and water. He had such in-depth knowledge of the housing portfolio and the water portfolio. There was nothing in those areas that you would raise and he could not give you much, much, much details and policy direction in terms of those areas. It's an area that, you know, he was quite comfortable with and mastered. And um, we used to talk about his in-depth knowledge of that portfolio area and thought that really that was where he was best suited. He had a way of making difficult things seem easy. So as we grappled with complex issues such as, you know, universal access 
as we dealt with the National Water Sector Policy and Implementation Plan, we found that Dr. Chang knew everything about the systems in each parish, where there were, what type of systems there were, if they were gravity fed or otherwise. His knowledge on the water sector is extensive. And so in that year, shortly after that, we had that policy approved through his guidance and his leadership. Among his legacy achievements under the water portfolio is the implementation of the 211 million US dollar Jamaica water supply improvement project. If I should say that if we didn't execute the Jamaica water sector improvement program in the, you know, my first term as Minister in Water, which extended into the you're the um, PNB, but in the 207 to 11 government, you would be able to drink water in Kingston today. It sounds extremely well of fact of life. Transform the thinking of individuals in the water sector. And we follow up with several like that. Dr. Chang's vast experience in the various areas of government brings a dynamic new way of thinking to the Ministry of National Security. He was appointed as the minister in 2018. The work with the police, though, literally rebrand the police in a sense has been most satisfying and I think you know re rebuilding trust and confidence in the police force and at the same time building the moral of the force. When I went to the ministry the police stations a lot of them were in disrepair and under the leadership of Dr. Chang we saw several of those stations being repaired also we rolled out some of the projects in terms of the forensic pathology suite, the autopsy suite that is it called. We also had the St. Catherine North Divisional HQ as well as the West Milan Divisional HQ. And these are significantly large projects, huge capital outlay. We're talking about billions of dollars. Considerable gains have been made in the area of technology. This includes e-policing, the acquisition of CCTV cameras and the build-out of the National CCTV Surveillance Program. Success was also achieved with the acquisition of several pieces of intelligence equipment and software which will enhance overall policing efforts. For his unwavering, dedicated and sterling contribution to national development, the Honorable Dr. Horace Chang is being appointed as a member of the Order of Jamaica. It's the fifth highest national award to be given by the government of Jamaica. Well, I have to express my appreciation for the confidence my Prime Minister and colleagues express in our giving me this very high honour. Really appreciate it and I know my family appreciates it. They have been with me throughout the struggle and continue to give us support. We all are in full support of this national honour and really wish to celebrate that with him. I am immensely proud of him. I think he's most worthy of the award. So, behind this busy but calm persona, with that <laughs> added smile, who is Dr. Harris Chan? Deputy Prime Minister Chang is caring and he's compassionate. He is instinctively joyful and that helps particularly in very serious situations and situations which re re require firm action. But he's also very good at negotiating and because of his personality it's inoffensive and it's, it's, it's stern but with that graciousness. He's relates to persons at all levels and that is one of the things that I admired about him. He, he wasn't big on, you know, status and, yeah, hierarchy. As the nation celebrated National Heroes Day on Monday under the theme One Love, One People, One Heritage, 
Dr. Horace Chang was one among 232 persons bestowed national honors and awards. We spoke with a few to get their reactions. an honor you know I didn't set out for this you know the aim was always to make my country proud myself of course and you know family and friends who are always there to support me and you know keep moving me forward it's definitely now in my mind that I need to put my foot down some more and see if I can you know bring home some more um, silverware for Jamaica I feel elated but I'm also humbled not only to be nominated but selected for this prestigious award. I've never worked for any accolades or any personal reward. And to be honored this way, I am truly blessed. I feel great and I feel like a proper Jamaican. I've been recognized by the country, I've been recognized by the government, and it's the greatest feeling to be recognized by your own government. Because I've been recognized all over the world and now, you know, we will receive everything that we work for. Well, I'm elated and I'm excited and I feel humbled and honored. It's a great feeling. Every Jamaican look towards this because they always say a king never crown in his country. What do you call this now? I'm being honored by my own countrymen. This is great. Awesome. This encouraged and empowered me to know that what I've been doing over the years and the decades, I've been recognized and acknowledged by my fellow countrymen and my people. This feels like a Grammy to me. I was shocked, I was stunned, and uh, I, I was happy, and I'm very thankful for it. It's empowering, um, and I feel that now I have to do more to have people feel the same way I have. You know, your work and you get recognized, um, it feels good, so I want to have others feel the same way, so it gives me an opportunity now to do more in photography. It is a great recognition to serve your country, to serve your people, to serve God, and to advance national development. For me personally, it means that the work continues for God and country. Glad to know that it has reached this far, to know that persons can do good, and it's good to do good. I'm feeling great, I'm just overwhelmed. I feel very humble, very elated. I've been advocating for burn victims for the past three years, and so far we have actually saved three lives. And it's a humbling experience being recognized by your own country. It definitely gives me fuel to say that we're on the right track. I'm on the right track in doing what I'm doing. When you're performing your duty, this is not anywhere close to one's mind. But when it is that um, the powers that be can uh, um, see the good work and to recognize you and to the extent where a national award is bestowed on you, it's really a gratifying feeling. I'm elated because um, with 28 years of service and now being recognized for that, um, you know, giving back to my community, I mean, it's very, 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 I mean, I'm ecstatic about it right now. How many more must die because of reckless drivers? How fast is too fast? Make we take time, no man? Obey the rules of the road. Drive with care. This is where our journey ends, but only for today. Do join us again tomorrow and we'll bring you another informative program. In the meantime, stay connected via our website, jis.gov.jm. And while you're online, send your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm or via X at JIS News. You may also find us on all the major social media platforms and through our mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Major Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.